When you set up your watercolor station for a watercolor project, there are a few things you need to know before you do it. it. Is what kind of paper do you have? This is my preferred brand. I really love Canson XL watercolor paper. But there are a few things that are different in each pack. So first off, you come down here and you'll notice it says 30. This is referring to how many pages are in the pack of paper. I personally like at least more than 20 for less than $10. If you're getting something like 10 pages for $15 or $20, you might be paying too much for watercolor paper, especially if you're a beginner. Over here is how big the paper is. It is 9 inches by 12 inches. And down here it is in centimeters. This over here is referring to the weight of the paper in a ream, a big roll of paper. So this ream weighed 140 pounds, and this is the same number in grams. When you do watercolor paper for an actual project, you want something at least 140 pounds or above. The next size up, I believe, is 260 pounds, and then 300 beyond that. Um, the one below 140 pounds is 90 pounds, and when you get 90 pounds, that has something uh, not quite right about it, except for practice. That's going to warp when you put water on it. You know, when you put water on a paper and it gets that ripple, bubbly effect, that's what that means. Over here, it says cold press. That is talking about how they made the paper and they used the weights to squish all the layers of paper together. They used cold weights. Uh, cold press paper is kind of a jack of all trades kind of paper. It's not very rough, but it's got a little bit of texture to the paper. Um, what else? Um, it's used by a lot of watercolor artists because it can do a lot of washes where you put a lot of color over a very big area very quickly and for finer details. Over here it's talking about the kind of surface you have. Uh, this is not always going to be very important or apparent. This is just says uh, grain finish, which means that one side is quite smooth and the other part is just a little bit rough. Somewhere on your pad of paper you should find a little symbol that says acid-free. Acid-free paper is A, not only good for the environment, but B, it will also make sure that your watercolor projects do not yellow with age. The more they stay out in the sun and your paper isn't acid-free, the more yellow they're going to become. And if you want to display them in your home somewhere, not keep them in a big book away from the rest of the world, you want acid-free paper. So let's get rid of that. I have my paper all ready to go. Before you start your project, you need to have painter's tape. It doesn't really matter what kind of painter's tape you use, uh, so long as it's easy to remove afterwards. This really helps the paper stay in place while you paint, and it prevents a lot of the warping that we talked about earlier. What I like to do is I like to take a strip of painter's tape Hold it on one finger over here, probably my middle one, and then I'll bring the rest of my hand back so that the smooth side and not the sticky side can touch each other. I'll go like that. And then I'll use my two fingers over here with my other two pinch fingers and rip. That way I have much less likely to accidentally stick one side of my tape to the other. And then I can just go down here. You can't see and I'll stick it on the edge of my paper. Do the same again. Middle finger, back with my two pictures, up here. Come up here. Press that down really good on my paper. And now for my long sides. If you're going to be doing a project where it's just something colorful in the middle and there's no color on the edges. You don't need to do all four sides, but if you're going to do a full colored project, everything's going to have color everywhere. 
you want to tape down all four sides. I like to lightly put my tape over my paper where I can see where it's overlapping with the rest of it. And then I'll take my nail and I'll press down along the edge right here to make everything every to make sure everything is tight and sealed. Last one. Okay, now all four sides of my paper are all ready to go. I need to set up the rest of my station. The next thing I'm going to need is a paper towel. Doesn't really matter what kind of paper towel you have. There's no like right or wrong answer here. I like to fold mine into quarters, just like that. And then I'll stick it somewhere either at the top of my paper or on the side. And that is where I will keep all of my paint brushes and maybe a couple of my pens. Who knows? Depends on the project. As far as your paint brushes go, this is the setup I like to have. I like to have a bigger or medium square brush that is flat. You can turn it to the side and you'll see it's not very poofy. There's not a whole lot of bristles going out. It's just a flat square. This is good for doing lots of smooth uh, flat colors. And I'll have a tiny one as well for smaller areas. Then I'll grab my round pointy brush. If I See if I turn this brush around a few times, you're going to notice that it's not flat like my square brushes. It's nice and round, and there's a little point at the top for when I want to do details. The next brush can be as small or as big. If as you want. I have a slightly bigger pointy brush and a slightly smaller one. Both those guys are good for doing little details for your finishing touches. These last two paint brushes are very much up to you if you would like to keep them. This is called a fan brush because of course it is shaped like a fan. It's a kind of a large round triangle, you know, a little point up here, very round right here, and you turn it this way and you'll notice that it is flat. This is great for doing large poofy areas like trees or, what's the word, flower petals. This one is optional, it's not necessary. And then you have this one, which is a round flat brush very round at the top, almost like a square, but not quite. And then, of course, it is flat. This guy is also good for doing large, fluffy shapes because it has a nice round tip. It's not too sharp. It's not too flat and square. This is great for doing clouds, tree branches, bushes, anything large and fluffy. So. The reason I keep these guys on a paper towel is that after you rinse your brush out of all of that color, it needs to go somewhere. I like to have paper towel so it catches any of that leftover water or paint that might still be stuck in my bristles and it just kind of absorbs into the paper towel. And the other reason you want a paper towel is that sometimes we make mistakes and that's okay. We just need to have a paper towel to absorb any of that extra paint or water that we might have spilled and make sure our project stays nice. The last couple things I will need are a pencil with an eraser for drawing. If you're a little more cautious about how you want to do your uh, watercolor project, I like to get a pink or a blue colored pencil. Depends on what I want to do. And I'll draw my my project in these colors first. Blue, of course, if you have a lot of blues and greens and it's a very cool project. Pink if it's much warmer. And these guys, they're really great for knowing where your watercolor project is, but not having that dark pencil line show up as good afterwards. Put those guys off to the side. 
Uh, the last thing I'll need, uh, second last thing I'll need is a pen for doing details afterwards, outlining things, adding tiny details, lots of different stuff. So there's a few pens you can choose from. It's the easiest one to get a hold of. It doesn't have ink in it, so it doesn't bleed as much as other ones. It's got a nice little tip to it, but it's not quite pointy, so you only kind of have a couple of lines you can do. So that's good for some projects. This is a Uniball ballpoint pen. It's a fine ballpoint pen. You take off the lid and you'll see that it is quite pointy, but it is made of ink. So if your watercolor project is not completely dry, there's a very big chance that these guys might blend together and you have a sort of weird ink blob in a corner. So this is good, but only when your watercolor project is completely dry. Sharpies are great, fine point Sharpies, I might add, are really great for doing big projects, big lines. I could spend forever getting one line bigger and bigger and bigger. Take a big fat Sharpie, take care of that really quick. All of those, great, all of those pens are great, but they are not waterproof. If you want a waterproof pen, like maybe you want to outline some stuff and you realize, oh shoot, I forgot to do A, B, C, or D, and I need to put more paint on there in an area that I've already done ink on. Well, this guy is great. He is a Micron pen. He, is, he has archival ink, and he is very, very, very small. So the tip of the pen is very much like a Sharpie pen, only it is smaller. And the ink that comes out of it is waterproof. And archival means that it will stay good for much, much longer than other things. This one is the most expensive. Uniball is the next one down, so maybe I think it's a $2 a pen, maybe less. Sharpie and Sharpie pens are the cheapest, but it's up to you how much you want to spend on a project. You don't need a Micron pen if you're sure your whole project is done. So why would you spend that much money on one? The last thing you're going to need before you start your watercolor project is a cup of water. Kind of important to watercolors, it is in the name. Um, you've probably seen from mine that mine is not very fancy or glass. It's just a plain red Solo cup. I like them because if you have a paper cup, that's fine. But if you accidentally leave it at your workstation, there's a chance the water might rot the paper or dissolve it. And then you have a great big puddle of watercolor paint sitting there. Um, glass is fine. No problem there. If you have an old mason jar or even a Tupperware that was once full of old like margarine, that's fine too as long as it's clean. You just need something that isn't going to absorb water, is easily washed out, and no one really cares about. Mom does not want you using her fancy china glasses, her fancy fancy crystal glasses to fill it up with water and watercolor. The very last thing you're going to need is watercolor paint. This is mine. It has 42 colors all ready to go. And if you go on to the Mac art supply guide, I can guide you through a lot of that. This is one of the more expensive ones, but it is a travel case. It is awesome, and it comes with all of these great colors. All the little colors are displayed on the bottom, so you can see which ones you're getting. And then it also comes with a little mixing tray at the bottom. If you have a different kind of watercolor paints, if you have the liquid ones, or the dried ones like these, you need some kind of mixing tray. A plastic plate is awesome. Uh, paper plates are okay if you're only going to use it the one time. I, When I'm not using this, I have a white china saucer that I got from uh, what's the word? an antique shop for like three bucks forever ago. But I like this one because I can fold it up, and if I have a little 
travel paintbrush. I'll just stick it right in there. It's got a little spot. But it's great for doing watercolors on the go, and the colors are awesome. Get that out of the way. Once you have all these guys in place, you are ready to do your watercolor project. 